Hi, and welcome back to Inspired the Game. I'm Sean. And I'm Lola. If you enjoy what you see here, please support our channel by subscribing down below. And if you've already subscribed, thank you very much, and please allow it to completely dry before use. <laughs> <laughs> we'll let you figure out what. <laughs> Today we are talking about two games sent to us from Daily Magic Games, which we are very excited about. They sent us with this bag. That's why I had to showcase it with a bag because I thought that was a really nice touch. They sent us Chocolatiers and Songbirds. I'm sorry, I had to make sure I was holding it correctly, not upside down. Chocolatiers and Songbirds. So these are two lovely little games that we will review for you today. Feel free to use the timestamps below to navigate through this review. So if you're interested in one game over the other, if you want to see the overview or just skip right to the view, all that information will be available down below. Before we get into a review of Songbirds, we'll give you a quick overview of how to play it. In a game of songbirds, you play a forest spirit helping your favorite songbird color prosper in secret. There are four different birds, each represented with seven cards. The number on each card represents the volume of the bird's song. Players take turns playing cards into a five by five grid. Once a, gr a column or row of five has been completed, you add up the numbers from each bird and see who was the loudest. The loudest bird of each column or row gets the berry and the points associated with it. At the end of the game, each player has one card left representing their favorite bird. They take the point from that card, plus the points that the bird has accrued throughout the game, and add them all up and see who won the game of songbirds. I gotta preface this with that we have a lovely little house finch that is making a nest, has made a nest at, the, at our back door and has little eggs that she's tending to and it's wonderful and we hear finch songs outside of all of our windows. Songbirds is a really sweet game. One of the first things that attracted me to it was the artwork. Each bird on each card is completely different than the other one. You get some in a nest, you get some flying. They are adorable. It is sweet, happy, joyful illustrations. I also really love the theme. This idea that we're supporting a bird by, um, by orchestrating and helping support their songs and who's the loudest. I think it's a really lovely theme to the game. And what's really interesting about playing it is clearly with the card game base as it is, there's a lot of luck based on the cards that you get, but it's really what you do with it. And it's, there's actually a surprising amount of strategy here. And I, I really enjoy that aspect of it because it's not just the cards you play. So say if you're going for the red songbird, that's the one you want to support, you also have a handful of other cards. And as you're playing them, well, you're increasing their volume, which isn't necessarily what you want. Mm -hmm. But the neat mechanism with this game is songbirds that have the same volume will cancel each other out. So you can use your other cards to put them within a row or a column to cancel out other ones that you don't want to win. So you can actually wind up winning in a column of your bird of choice with a lowly number of two by maybe canceling out another higher number like two sevens. And so there's a lot of depth of strategy for how simple this game is. And it is a simple game. So it's simple, it's um, not expensive, it takes two minutes to teach somebody how to play it. This is a game that you can bring anywhere and say, hey, let's play a game and sit down and play it. It's um, great for travel too, because as you can see, it's quite compact. It's got a lot of interesting nuance to the strategy, mm -hmm. I find. And on top of the different nuances, there's also different variants for the two and three player games, as well as a four player variant, a solo and a co-op. Yeah, so we only played this at two players, and that's important to note because, as Sean mentioned, the game does play a little bit different at a four-player player count as well, so we haven't tried that one. But it does offer a lot of options of ways to play it. Ooh. My only complaint with this game is it really could use a grid to play on, whether it's a playmat or um, an actual board, because when you're putting out, when you're setting up, you put out all the berries and you have to put them in a five by five grid. And of course, given the, the, um, the dimensions of the card, it's not necessarily always easy to just eyeball that. So it would be lovely and it would really elevate this game if it had a nice, beautiful art game mat or board in order 
to support the structure of it. And I think that it's an interesting enough game that it would warrant that extra cost that would go with it. So I think that would be a nice addition to it. But other than that, it's a really sweet game and we really liked this. It's a great little entry gateway game with a little bit of thinky strategy to it, little bit of luck and a whole lot of fun. <laughs> So now we're going to take a look at Chocolatiers. Before we get started into the review, let's look at a quick overview of how it's played. In Chocolatiers, we are working to create fine boxes of chocolates. In each game, we will have a certain number of chocolate cards, which we will be using to purchase box tiles. Once you have accrued enough cards to purchase a box tile that corresponds to it, you will discard the chocolate cards to get the tile in your sampler area. Once you have placed a box tile, you cannot move it. As play continues, gathering up chocolate cards and playing chocolate tiles as you're able to create them. You also have three wild chocolates at your disposal. These can be used to fill up empty spaces and have the extra power of tasting like every chocolate around them. This is relevant for the end of the game. The first player who has finished a two by three grid, their chocolate box, will signal the end of the game. At game end, you will look to see at how many contiguous chocolates you have made in each variety. Whichever player has created the most continuous chocolates in that will score its corresponding scoring tile. You'll do this for each of the chocolates out there and any that are connected by this magic wild chocolate, they will be added to the score as well for everything that's around it. Whoever has earned the most points at the end of the game, adding on the points of the individual chocolate box tiles wins the game. Now, Chocolatiers is a great, simple set collection game. So we, if you've seen our review of Steam Up, we'll give a link to it up there in case you haven't seen it. I think yours is more accurate. <laughs> um, it's pretty much a very similar game. So your set collection, you're trying to create this little box of chocolates by collecting and playing down. Um, it's much more simple, um, simpler than Steam Up and has a smaller price tag associated because it's a simpler game. When I taught this to my daughter, it took two minutes for her to learn how to play it. You get right into it, jump right in, 20 minutes. It's fast, it's simple, and it's fun. I do have a recommendation. Play this game with some chocolate. <laughs> or maybe, maybe the winner gets the chocolate. You have it on the table like a prize. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you get to eat it in front of the loser punish them properly for not doing well enough well the wild <laughs> the wild chocolates you also get points if you actually haven't used them in your in your in your sample box so maybe that's the thing is your magic chocolates yeah. are the actual chocolates yeah extra yeah. incentive for not using them. and the and and bringing up those wild chocolates is really fantastic because that's my favorite part of the game so there's the basic set collection of getting the cards to get the chocolates but those those wild chocolates work for everything that it's mm -hmm. orthogonally adjacent to so you can have a set of chocolates that you had four but you connect that and suddenly you have six of those but you're but it works for this other set and it works for this other one too and it can really augment how many chocolates you have in each of the sets mm -hmm. which can be really satisfying yeah, it does add a, another element to the puzzle. So we want to thank Daily Magic Games again for sending us these two games. These are sweet games. These are games that will stay on our shelf. The nice thing about it is they're the type of game that we might think of to bring on vacation with us, mm -hmm. especially if we're going to a place which has people who aren't as much into games as we are and might not be able to or want to tackle a heavier game. Something light, something fun great for a family to play. So if you want to check it out, we will have a link to their website down below. In the meantime, thank you so much for joining us for this review today. Check out some of our other videos and as always, happy, happy gaming, gaming folks. folks. You locked in on me? Locked yeah. In on you. But I'm dodging. <laughs> Can't lock in on me. Is that good enough? Interested in the overview or just the view? <laughs> <laughs> once you shake, once you shake. <laughs> Hi and welcome back to Inspired the Game. Not I'm at... Why are you staring Why are at me? Why are you looking? <laughs> I feel like there's too much bad there.